Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel, the Spiritual Justice Gem. God is Quita. Are you going with Quita? I answer to both. Don't matter, baby. I answer to both. Okay? Okay. Let's get into it. If this is the second video about autism because I'm studying it and I really want my daughter to heal. So let's get into it. Um, I've learned that um, the hypothal hypothalamus gland, the pituitary gland, and the... What was the other one? No, no, no. Don't do this to me now. Oh, I took notes. Yay me. <laughs> and the pineal gland. They are called the master glands. So if they the master glands, they that everything you you feel really me? These are the master glands. It's your crown chakra glands. I was studying the Bible, and then I referred the Bible back to the Egyptian um culture. The Bible and the Egyptian culture coincides together. It's more knowledge in the Egyptian culture than it is the Bible. If you really study it and you can uh, understand it, um. But where I, spirit, I asked the most high. She gave me the information. I asked her like a couple of days ago. I'm like, give me the knowledge. Please show me how to heal my daughter. Um, I really don't want her to be on medications. Not, you know, the human ones. I really want to use natural herbs and stuff. And I it's very specific. Three days later, um, I got this. No, it wasn't three. It was the next day that I got the information, but I didn't understand, I didn't realize that God had answered my prayer until I'm like, why, why, did, I, why did they, because I'm always the person that asks why, I'm like, why, why are you showing me this, and they was like, duh, you asked, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, anywho, that's just my little testimony, um, these are the master glands, and when I went to look up, it was on Pinterest, where I found that if you look up the Egyptian, um, Coach, I just put in, I didn't even look it up. It just popped up on my thing on, uh, on Pinterest. I didn't even look up Egyptian, nothing, but it's Egyptian culture. It just popped up and it tells you about the pituitary gland and all three of those glands, the, the pituitary, the pineal, and the hypothalamus. I'm like, why are you, why, are you, why am I, why is this popping up? Like, what? <laughs> Anyways, those, these are the master glands and most people, all people who have autism, these master glands are in um, are not functioning properly. They're chemically imbalanced or not developed so for some of you, but most, most of the time they're chemically imbalanced um, for autistic people, specifically autistic. I'm talking about autism here. I found that Mecca, I was wondering why my daughter, because I, I tried different teas and the raspberry tea, I didn't even realize that she responded well to the raspberry tea. I was already on the summer and didn't even know it. But the raspberry leaf, red raspberry leaf is really good. She, for a couple days, she went to school and she was fine. I'm just like, I didn't even realize it until I researched it. But um, the mecca, the, I hope I'm saying it correctly because, you know, I don't, I don't pronounce everything correctly. The um raspberry, the red raspberry leaf is a chastity tree berry, the milk thistle, oak straw, valerian. She's on that, and that is doing a little something for her. But they say the valerian root mixed with the passion flower and the California poppy is very good to to take those three together and on a regimen with autistic people. That's what I read on the website. The website is called uh <laughs> don't make me name this website. Um, I'll put it in the description box. I'll put it down there for you guys. I got it pulled up right here on my um laptop. But, um, yes, those three work together. I'm going to try that next with my daughter. I know the raspberry tea works. I got to get some more of that. I know for a fact that works for my daughter. The valerian um, root, the, pas the, plas the passion flower, the ca California poppy works in conjunction with the three. I just got home the valerian root, so I got to get the other two. The omega-3, um, these are the foods that's really good for people with autism. And I got to change her diet once again. And once I changed her diet, she her stomach was really upset. So the omega-3, the omega-3 uh, and six fatty acids are good for people with autism. Eggs, bluefish, uh, can I, olive oil, chai, flax, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, allergy. Did I say that right? I hope I said that right. Yeah. I'm going to just list it, list it in the description box below all the stuff that I'm reading out to you guys. Coconut oil, coconut period is good. Avocado. I'm just going to list all this stuff down here with the website. 
So you won't think I'm just pulling this out my, you know, <laughs> you know how some people are. You got the this, you got the scripture. Girl, I got the website. I got the list. I got everything right here, right now. Okay. I forgot y'all to prove me instead of going to research <laughs> society. But anyway, we, we ain't going to do that. I'm going to go ahead. I, since I'm already researching it, I'm going to give you guys the information and I'm going to leave it in the description box and you guys can go look it up. If your children, if your child is dealing with autism, which I, my child has autism, I had autism as a child. I had more of the, like I said, the speech part. She has more of the social part, a little bit of the speech, but more of the social part. And yeah, I'm going to leave all this in the description box below. But that, like I told you, the pituitary gland and the master glands, I got that from the most high. She the one um, showed me this information. I did not pull this out of my yin yang and you can go research it, everything. It all lines up. One thing I know about God about the most high is that she is, is always logical. It's always done order and decently. It's always there. You can always go back and reference back even to the beginning of time where this stuff is proven to work, where it's proven. So that's, that's what I love about the most high, because not only will he, will they give you confirmation after confirmation after con you will get so many confirmations. So you're like, yeah, we, we can't disclaim this. Yeah. She, <laughs> you can't disclaim. You can. It's like websites, Egyptian culture, the Bible even talks about herbs and like y'all, the stuff that y'all really think uh, evil, but when they talk about root workers, what's wrong with root workers? I don't understand that. Unless you do them dark magic on somebody, I don't, herbs is in everything that we do. You know what I mean? That the medicine, where do you think they come from? What do you think they make medicine from? Like herbs, roots, and these natural things you can get. And they already be in capsules and stuff, so you can you can kind of micro dosage like each time. Okay, this person did a higher dose or lower dose. You can do it that way. There's so many different ways that we can heal ourselves, heal our minds, heal our bodies. We have to not even like I was watching this on YouTube. I don't want to say her name because I don't want to. I don't you know this kind of iffy situation. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but she was she was so brilliant when she said that. She was just like, don't think outside the box. Uh, what well, she said, there is no box. Don't think outside the box. There is no box. Don't let the box limitate you, limit you, because there is no box. It really isn't a box. We, as a society, put boxes around people and labels on people, which is uh, something uh, most time is good to do that because it helps you to un us to understand. But a lot of times we use it so much and be so firm on that until it stops our growth. It stunts our growth. It starts to stigmatize certain things and it doesn't need stigmatizing. It just needs, okay, that's what this is. And this is how you heal that. It's just that simple. And sometimes we go overboard as a society because we think more harder and, and is better. And it's not. Sometimes you just need to be gentle. Sometimes you just need a little, a, little, a, little, a little softness, a little love, that little feminine energy. That's all you need is it's a little love. You don't need all that, oh, this is what it is, all that factual stuff. Sometimes you don't need that. Just a little love or you can get the facts and put a little love with it. And, you know, it don't take all that aggressiveness all the time. It really don't. Me, I can embody any energy and people think, oh, she's a shape shifter. No, I'm an energy shifter. One thing about me, I adapt to the situation. My moods adapt. In the Bible, they say it's a season and a time for everything. When it's time to fight, God don't need you on the battlefield crying. The most high don't need you on the battlefield crying. You know what I'm saying? When, 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 when it's time to heal, God don't need you fighting wars because you're supposed to be healing. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, just, it's just this time. We're in the time of healing, of self-love, of information, getting a lot of information. And then we need to apply it with gentleness, especially when we're talking about mental illnesses. People don't need to be stigmatized. They need to be healed and loved. This is not, we're not talking about business here. I can see in the business world, it's more black and white. Okay, we you 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 got that. I mean, we 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 talking about love here. We talking about healing. We are talking about people's mental health. We need to be more gentle with people's mental health. We really do. As a society, we need to be more gentle on how we judge people. We really do. We we've come a long ways. Don't get me wrong, but we still got some work to do as a whole society. We really do as a whole nation. 
Because it's at any given time, something can happen to someone. Some, you could become mentally ill, mentally disabled. Just like any given time, somebody can get in a car accident. It's the same thing. We always want to stigmatize people, mental health, when, okay, that's what's going on with that person. So why would you want to stigmatize that person? Why would you want to shame that person? That means that person needs the extra love. That means extra, the extra care. That person needs extra attention. Not your words of like, oh, I can see if somebody was a narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath. Those people don't have a care for nobody. All they out is for themselves and they even hurting themselves because the devil don't care about nobody but itself. It's like eating your own self. That's basically what the um, psychopaths and narcissists do. That's basically what it is. So we don't need, I could see if somebody had one of those disabilities. Um, that's not even a disability. That's, we don't even get on that. But um, just really, we don't need to stigmatize mental health at all. We really don't. When it comes down to people needing help and, 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 and wanting help, we don't, we don't need to hurt them anymore. They already been hurt enough. All right, you guys, that's no, you know, I can go on and on. Good night.